Magandang araw po sa ating lahat na imbagnal daw kanya tayo amin. Good day to every one of us. Now, let's solve problem number two on dual purpose synchronous motor. Let's read the problem. The average input to a manufacturing plant is 3,000 kVA at a power factor of 0.72 lagging. A synchronous motor having a rating of 1,300 kVA is installed for the purpose of operating a new line shaft and improving the plant power factor. Assuming that the synchronous motor load is about 600 horsepower at an efficiency of 89.5% and that is operated at rated KVA input, calculate letter A the overall KVA load and letter B the overall power factor. Now let's understand the problem. The manufacturing plant has an average power input of 3000 KVA at a power factor of 0.72 lagging. For the purpose of operating a new line shaft and to improve the overall power factor of the plant, a synchronous motor is being installed. It has a rating of 1300 kVA, that is its rated kVA input. It is assumed that the output of the synchronous motor is 600 horsepower and its efficiency is 89.5%. We are asked to determine the overall KVA load and the overall power factor of the system. To solve this problem, let's use phasor diagram. Since we will be solving for the overall KVA and power factor of the system, let's consider the power triangle representing the initial condition where the synchronous motor is not yet installed and let's consider the power triangle representing the synchronous motor. And from there, we will combine both power triangles so that we could solve for the overall conditions. Let's take a look at the power triangle representing the initial condition. Its KVA load is 3000. Let's calculate the effective power and reactive power at this condition. Solving for its effective power from the formula of the power factor that is the ratio between the real power and the apparent power. Cross multiply both the power factor and the apparent power to both sides. We have the effective power equals the apparent power multiplied that by the power factor. So for the initial effective power, let's substitute the values of its initial KVA and power factor to this equation. 3000 kVA times 0.72, this is 2160 kilowatts. This is its initial effective power. Let's solve for its reactive power using Pythagorean theorem. The square of the apparent power equals the sum of the squares of the effective and reactive powers. Transpose the square of the effective power to the other side of the equation to determine its reactive power. So we have... Q squared equals S squared minus P squared. Then simplifying this further, that is the square root of the quantity S squared minus P squared. Substitute the values of the initial apparent power and the initial effective power to this equation. We have the square root of 3000 kVA squared minus 2160 kilowatts squared. The answer is 2081.922 kVar. So this is the power triangle representing the initial condition. Now let's take a look at the power triangle representing the synchronous motor. Its direction is different from the power triangle of the initial condition since we know that the synchronous motor has a leading power factor. Again, its KVA input is 1300 kVA. Its load is assumed to be about 600 horsepower at an efficiency of 89.5%. To analyze the power triangle, let's solve for its kilowatt input or effective power input. To do that from the formula of the efficiency, that is the ratio between the power output and the power input. Cross multiply both the efficiency and the power input to both sides. We have power input equals power output divided by the efficiency. But since the load of the synchronous motor is in terms of horsepower, then we need to convert that into watts. So we have 600 horsepower times 746 watts divided by 1 horsepower. Canceled out the horsepower. So 600 times 746 watts, this is 447,600 watts. Or in terms of kilowatts, divide this by 1,000. So we have 447.6 kilowatts. 
Now let's substitute this value to this formula with its efficiency. So that is 447.6 kilowatts divided by 0 0.895. The answer is 500.112 kilowatts. Or we could round this off into 500 kilowatts. This is the effective power input of the synchronous motor. Now that we have these values, let's solve for the reactive power of the synchronous motor using the Pythagorean theorem. We will arrive at this equation. Substitute the values of the apparent and effective input powers of the synchronous motor. We have the square root of 1300 kVA squared minus 500 kilowatts squared. The answer is 1200 kVar. Now that we have these values, let's combine this power triangle to the initial condition. This is their combination. This is the power triangle representing the initial condition. This is the power triangle representing the synchronous motor. It is drawn at the tip of the apparent power of the initial condition. This arrow is equal to the power input of the synchronous motor since they are in parallel. And at the same time, all effective powers are lying in the same direction at an angle of zero with respect to the origin. We have already learned that in our subject about alternating current. At this part of the phasor diagram, we could find the power triangle representing the overall system. We are asked to determine the overall KVA load of the system. Let's say that that is S final. To do that, we use Pythagorean theorem. We already know this. Final KVA load equals the square root of the sum of the squares of the final effective power and its final reactive power. To determine the overall power factor, that is simply the ratio between the overall effective power and the overall apparent power. But first, to do that, we need to determine the values of the overall effective power and overall reactive power. For the effective power, that is just the sum of the initial effective power and the effective power input of the synchronous motor. We could analyze that using this phasor diagram. Again, the final value or overall value of the effective power equals the sum of the initial effective power and the effective power input of the synchronous motor. We have already computed those values. Subject those values to this equation, we have 2,160 kilowatts plus 500 kilowatts, that is 2,660 kilowatts. So now that we have this value next, let's determine the overall reactive power of the system. It is found at this power triangle. Analyzing this phasor diagram, we could say that the initial reactive power equals the sum of the overall or final reactive power and the reactive power of the synchronous motor. We already have those values. Let's substitute them to this equation. That is 2,081.922 kVar minus 1,200 kVar. The answer is 881.922 kVar. So now that we have these values, let's substitute them to this equation to determine the overall kVA or apparent power of the system. The square root of 2,660 kilowatts squared plus 881.922 kVar squared, the answer is 2,802.389 kVA. Again, this is the value of the overall kVA or apparent power of the system. Now, let's solve for the overall power factor of the system. Again, from this formula, we already have these values. Substitute them to this formula, 2,660 kilowatts divided by 2,802.389 kVA. The final power factor or overall power factor of the system is 0 0.949 or we could round this off to 0 0.95. And analyzing this phasor diagram, we could still say that the power factor is lagging. Therefore, the overall power factor is 0 0.95 lagging. Hopefully, we learned something today. We will still be solving more problems about this topic for the following videos. Maraming salamat po sa panonood. Thank you so much for watching. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Naimbag nga aldaw kanya tayo. Amin. Good day to every one of us.